You know that phrase, he wouldn't hurt a fly? It's usually applied to someone gentle as a compliment. That's a lovable person, you know, a person that you can really trust. And yet, last week, the internet learned that it can also apply to the most exhausting fucking person in the world. Jody Smith, a man so performatively sensitive that he not only refuses to follow expert guidance in killing an invasive fly species that's directly and threatening agriculture and native wildlife, but who tells the New York Times about it and then poses for a photo like this. It's not even that he looks like that or that, or that he refuses to kill a very bad fly, but it's the hypocrisy in which he admits to the New York Times that he kills cockroaches on the regular. A quick Google revealed that the same guy made headlines last year for getting a lobotomy and losing his sense of fear. So let that be a lesson to you all. Do not under any circumstances ever lose your fear of looking like an absolute dumbass in the New York Times. Anyway, this video isn't about Jody, it's about the fly that he refuses to kill. The spotted lantern fly is a pretty little mothy looking fellow, but despite appearances, he is actually a plant hopper, which is a catch all term for insects that kind of suck at flying. So they hop from plant to plant, often using camouflage that helps them blend in with leaves and trunks. They all feed on the plants that they hop around on, poking them with their little needle mouths and sucking out sap, which can lead to the spread of disease from plant to plant. Uh, and also it can encourage problems like fungal growth from that sap that they leave behind. The spotted lanternfly is native to parts of China, where it lives in harmony by feeding on trees like the Chinese sumac and being fed on by things like several different species of parasitic wasps. Unfortunately, it turns out to be quite the ambitious little bug when traveling. Back around 2012, some spotted lanternflies sneaked into some shipments to the east coast of the United States. And since then, they've quickly spread to 12 different states in an exponential growth that you might recognize from early 2020 and a tinier invasive pest. Experts suspect that if we can't stop the lantern flies, they'll get clear across to the West Coast in the next decade or so. They don't bite or sting or cause any direct pain to humans or our pets, but they do still manage to fuck things up quite a bit, as I alluded to earlier. They target plants like grapevines, maple trees, and black walnuts, all of which are critical to the U.S. economy. Experts estimate that they've cost over $300 million in damage in Pennsylvania alone already, having destroyed several vineyards, and they haven't even hit our biggest wine regions yet, where tens of thousands of people are employed and who are already dealing with the negative impact of climate change on their crops. But money problems aside, there is the issue of how invasive species like the spotted lanternfly push out and destroy native species. Another species of plant hopper, for instance, pushed a Jamaican coconut tree to the brink of extinction in the early 2000s. Whenever we see an, inv an invasive species taking hold, it is usually at the very least taking up resources that previously supported a native species. And as I mentioned in my video on the bees last year, native plants and insects are important because they are the backbone of a healthy functioning ecosystem in that they have evolved together over the course of hundreds of thousands, millions of years. So what do we do about the spotted lanternfly? Well, local environmental agencies like the New York City Parks Department are calling on people to kill as many as you can. If you see it, squish it. That's where that now famous New York Times piece came in, as I guess they just ran out of news in New York that day. So they sent a reporter out to find as many dumbasses as they could who felt icky about squishing bugs. Scientists are also asking for people in infested areas to be mindful when they travel. Plant hoppers suck at flying, so they rely upon people to wing their way across the country, hiding themselves and their eggs in things like RVs and firewood and outdoor furniture and equipment. 
Researchers at New York State Integrated Pest Management at Cornell College of Agriculture and Life Sciences have put together a map that they keep updating, showing counties where the lanternfly has been spotted, so to speak. If you live in one of those highlighted blue counties, you should do a thorough check of your vehicle and a number of common items if you're traveling outside of the quarantined area. I've put links to all of these resources in the transcript, which as with every video you can find linked in the description below, it goes to the transcript on my Patreon, which is free for everyone, whether you're a patron or not. Cornell has a great website full of information about these infestations, and there are links there where you can report sightings of the flies if you're somewhere in New York State. But as always, we get back to a frequent topic on this channel, individual actions in the face of an overwhelming threat that can only truly be solved with competent large-scale government action. We can only squish so many bugs beneath our flip-flops. And just like with fighting COVID-19 by getting vaccinated, there are always going to be idiot holdouts. So just like with COVID-19 vaccinations, doing your little part does help and you should feel good about squishing those jerks and not violating quarantine. But we still need our state and federal agencies to step up. The good news is that some politicians are stepping up. Chuck Schumer has just announced, my God, this is the second video in like two weeks where I'm complimenting Congress people. But Chuck Schumer has just announced the securing of $200 million for that integrated pest management program. And he's continuing to push for the federal government to allocate an additional $22 million to the United States Department of Agriculture's Animal and Plant Health Inspection Service next year to specifically help control invasive species like the spotted lanternfly. Also, as I mentioned in my previous video, the recently passed Inflation Reduction Act includes $20 billion over the next decade for Department of Agriculture efforts like the Conservation Stewardship Program, which helps farmers institute practices that will protect native insects like wild bees in the face of these invasive threats. While I'm on the topic, uh, in that last video I did on wild bees, I mentioned that I was at the time in the process of killing my lawn uh, that came with the house that I bought in 2020. I'm still working on that very slowly, but uh, the lawn is dead. It's now mostly mulch, and I have some thriving native plants that are really cool, like sticky monkey flower and coyote mint and yarrow and woolly blue curls. And there's definitely been a noticeable increase in bees and butterflies and hummingbirds in the yard. And I'm really excited for the fall when I can plant more things uh, because here in the Bay Area, uh, the fall is when we start getting more rain, hopefully, uh, to allow these plants to get more established. I'm also planning to put in bird feeders and some drinking water, or uh, as my partner refers to a bird bath, a gravy boat for the neighborhood crows to dunk their kills in, which I find delightful. He's not quite as in love with the concept as I am. But if you want more info on that or to follow along, you can check out this thread that I'm updating occasionally on Twitter or subscribe to my alternate like lifestyle YouTube channel where I will be posting video updates uh, of the yard um, as it comes together. So I know that individual action can only do so much, but it's honestly really gratifying to know that as I pester our government for large systemic action, uh, I'm able to make this happy little oasis for indigenous plants and creatures here in my backyard. And all it really takes is a bit of sweat and time and a few bucks here and there for seeds. You can even do something like this if you have as little as a small balcony off of your apartment. Lots of native plants do really well in containers, and your local pollinators will be very happy. Just something to consider if your stomach churns at the idea of squishing a spotted lanternfly, but you still want to help. <laughs>